Hi Tubers and welcome back. In today's video I'm going to show you where the main jet goes on a Nikki carburetor off a Briggs & Stratton engine. Now when working on these carburetors I found it easier to take the whole assembly right off. I start by removing the two nuts on this end of the bracket by the muffler. On this end you have where the governor linkage goes on and the throttle linkage on this other side. On the other side of the carburetor you have the uh, vacuum. Here's the fuel inlet. If you're going to take the carburetor apart to put it into an ultrasound or some kind of cleaning solution, you have two long bolts, one on each side with a nut on this end. When you remove these two nuts, the plastic fitting will come off and the bolt itself will screw out. When the carburetor is apart, this is what it looks like. This carburetor is marked because I'm working on a couple of them and I mark them so I know what I'm doing to each one. Now, when you go to take this carburetor apart, the bowl is held on with these two screws underneath, one on each end, and this anti-backfire solenoid. This is a half inch fitting. I already freed up this solenoid and the screws before the video to save some time. The solenoid comes off fairly easy, but those screws can be very stubborn. You may even have to put this carburetor in a vise to remove them. There we go. When you take this off, you want to make sure this plunge is moving freely. I had to clean this with a little carburetor cleaner. You can hook up the wires there to a battery and this plunge will be going up and down. If it doesn't work, replace it. It will either cause a flooding situation or a no-start situation depending on which way it's locked up. Now here's these two screws on the bottom. These are the two that could be a big problem. Do not use a Phillips screwdriver. If you do, you'll strip them and have a real difficult time getting them out. Use a screwdriver that's wide enough for the screw. This one's a quarter inch, it's a Craftsman. If it's in there, if it's a little wider, it won't hurt, but you don't want it narrower. Now, these screws happen to come out easy when I did this one, but I had one I had to put in advice. Let me tell you something, it's a job getting them out when they're in there. I recommend that you use a container of some sort so these parts can fall into and make your life a lot easier. You don't want to be looking for these little pieces as you're taking this apart. Your main jet is located right in here. This plastic piece pulls off and the jet falls right out. This is why I recommend working over some kind of container. I'm trying to get this in focus. Now this jet has a rubber o-ring on the tip of it. I don't know if you can see that. That right here. I have two pictures of that jet next to a penny over here to show you the size and maybe help clarify it a little bit. You see how small it is and where that rubber o-ring is. And that jet fits in several different places on the carburetor. So it could be confusing if you didn't see where it fell out of. But it goes right in on the back side of this with the rubber o-ring facing down. Once you have it in there, you could push it down with the back of a drill bit or of a punch if you have one on hand. Now these plastic parts, they do warp so you have to look out for that and that could cause a leak and a flooding condition and this Nikki carburetor has one piece that's a main piece and in here this will cause a flooding leak a flooding situation right here that o-ring you can see this one's distorted and this was causing some flooding Some of these carburetors have one piece and they don't have that little o-ring. It's a Nikki carburetor but it's a, it's a different setup. I have to get a new gasket kit for this. But when you're putting it back together, it goes on fairly simple. Just get the gasket, put it on the plastic piece, turn it over. And this is how it looks. Don't forget to put the other o-ring on if you have the one with the two pieces. On this carburetor, it was stuck in the carburetor itself so I just left it there. I'm leaving everything together until I get the new kit. 
Now I'll put the bowl back on. Just make sure that our gasket isn't sticking out one side or the other. Put the two screws in. When you put these screws in, snug down one side, then the other, then tighten it up. You got to remember that's plastic underneath, and uh, just to, just to make sure that it doesn't warp, that you don't cause it to warp. Again, check the gasket all around. Make sure it's not sticking out. If it's sticking out on one side, it's going to be leaking on the other. This is fairly simple to put together. Now, if you had one of the carburetor that had the screws that were difficult to take out, remember, they don't have to be that tight going in. There's a lock wash on this that'll hold it in there. Just tighten it down, give it a good turn, and that's all you need. You may have to take it apart again. Once the screws are in, put the solenoid back. Again, make sure it's working. Well guys, that's a wrap. I'm just waiting for the new gaskets to arrive so I can install this carburetor. If you enjoyed this video and found it useful, let me know by posting your comments down below and giving it a like. And if you would, pass it along to others who may also find it useful. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe by hitting that Joe Z button up here. Thank you for watching, and until next time, stay well.